right, thank you guys so much for joining us today for the Chores Facebook Live. September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and so we're so happy to be able to share this year's theme with you guys, which is Sickle Cell Matters. My name is Jennifer Newland, and I am a physician assistant that works here at CHOR in the Pediatric Hematology Clinic. And my role is to take care of our sickle cell patients predominantly, along with Dr. India Sisler and our awesome team of other providers. Um, here at VCU, we have a comprehensive sickle cell clinic. And what that means is we have a team of medical providers. We have a clinical social worker, Alicia. We have a nurse navigator that helps us to navigate with different specialists, um, to help us to do all the behind the scenes work um, that needs to happen for patients when it comes to school forms and different paperwork. We have an education consultant that helps us with our patients that have problems in school. Um, and so this is a huge resource um, for us, and so that is awesome. We have social work, we have the chaplain, um, we have just all kinds of wonderful resources that build up our team to make it a comprehensive sickle cell clinic. So you're probably wondering, some of you might think, what is sickle cell disease? Um, and so that's why we're here today to educate you some on what is sickle cell. Um, sickle cell disease is the most common inherited red blood cell disorder, um, and we in the United States have about 100,000 patients um, that are affected by sickle cell disease. Here at VCU, the Children's Hospital of Richmond, we're the second largest sickle cell center in the state, and we take care of 320 patients in the Central Virginia area. And um, so sickle cell disease, like I said, is a red blood cell disorder. And so the, the hemoglobin, uh, which is a protein that carries oxygen all over our, our bodies, um, is abnormal in our sickle cell patients. And because of the abnormality, when their body is stressed or they have some kind of triggers, their, their red blood cells can become sickled, and this causes problems. Mm -hmm. It can cause patients to have pain, organ damage, stroke. There's a multitude of problems that can happen because of the abnormal hemoglobin. Our job in the sickle cell clinic is to try to prevent these complications and be proactive and preventative. Um, so uh, that's a little bit about sickle cell. There are four major types of sickle cell disease, so people are always wondering what different types there are. The most common type of sickle cell disease that we um, see patients with is homozygous sickle cell disease, and they inherit sickle cell trait from both of their parents. Sickle cell disease is an inherited, means they get it because their parents have abnormal genes. It is not something that is contagious, they can't catch it, they are, you are born with sickle cell disease. It is a lifelong chronic medical illness. Um, and the most common type, like I said, is the homozygous sickle cell disease. We also have patients that have hemoglobin SC disease. We have patients that have sickle beta plus thalassemia and sickle beta zero thalassemia. We won't go into the details of all the different types today. If you have questions about the types, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to send us questions and we're happy to provide those details more specifically. We're lucky enough today to be able to have two of our amazing families um, that are proactive. They have their families here that we care for, but they're also um, awesome partners in the community as they help run one of our community organizations here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. And I have Dion Bobo and Tiffany Dews. And we're gonna ask Tiffany some of the um, questions about blood donation, because we know blood donations with our sickle cell patients is super absolutely. important. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us why blood donations are so critical for people with sickle cell disease. So um, generally uh, when you have, well, I, I'll just say my personal story with sickle cells that I have two kids with sickle cell and uh, both of them have had blood transfusions. Um, so uh, when they go into a crisis situation, um, they are in the hospital suffering from chronic pain and different levels tend to go down. So the hemoglobin, reticulates, um, all that tends to go down. And when their levels get too low, of course, um, they'll need um, a blood transfusion. So blood is critical to those um, who suffer from sickle cell disease. Great. So tell us a little bit, what is a red blood cell transfusion? What is a red blood cell transfusion? <laughs> so um, generally, when you donate blood, that's red blood. So 
it's a pint when you go, you donate. Uh, there's different blood drives that go on. So um, that's red blood that comes out of, you know, of course your arm. And um, so generally when people, generous people donate, <laughs> yes, yes. They, uh, they donate to those who, um, who are in need. So those with sickle cell, those who have um, babies, uh, women who have had babies. Um, but generally sickle cell, um, you know, so yes, red blood is the main blood that flows through our body. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there special requirements for blood donations for sickle cell patients? Uh, yes. So for sickle cell patients, uh, of course, you have to be healthy. Uh, definitely have to be healthy in order to donate. Um, the day of the blo uh, donation, um, you will need to eat a healthy breakfast or lunch. Um, definitely your iron levels need to be um, at a great level. Um, in order for you to donate because when you're given blood, they're taking that iron and that blood from you so and they're giving it to someone else. So you want to replenish that by either, I would recommend, um, especially for women, by taking a iron pill. Mm -hmm. um, at least, I would say at least a week or two ahead of time. Um, but, um, so yeah, so someone that's healthy, eat a healthy breakfast or a lunch, um, drink plenty, plenty, plenty of water. Um, so those are generally the requirements uh, for donating, as well as, um, yeah, I think that's generally it. Those are the general the travel and stuff. Yeah, travel, if you travel, but they have a list of questions when, you, sure. when you're there to, um, to go over, but those are the general basics for donating. But I also want to add in there, there too, that if you do have a sickle cell trait, you can donate as well. Absolutely. Um, so I have the trait, my husband has a trait, and we actually donate. We cannot give that blood to someone with sickle cell, but the blood has three components, um, which is red, whole blood, the plasma, and the platelets. And um, all of that can be donated to, to someone who is in need. So. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about like the importance of having some diverse donor pools. So thinking about our sickle cell patients and you know why they might, you know, looking at the donors, like who we need to donate. Yes, yeah, so um, generally, um, the African American population is extremely low. So uh, we, and it's, I don't want to say it's best, but the thing is, is that you have a better chance of getting someone who possibly have some of the same antibodies on their blood. Um, so the, depending on certain regions of where they're from, um, but it's, it, it does, it's better for those with African descent or even Caribbean descent to donate someone with, um, to donate to someone um, who is of the same ethnic background or possibly have some of that because they do tend to have some of the same components um, like antibodies that are on the blood. So when you donate often, um, well not when you donate often, but when you give often, and I'll just say my child was born with a rare antibody. So say for instance, we, you and I are from, um, I don't know, the Caribbean, but we have some of the same genetic blood pool that, you know, it's like, oh, these are the same match, this is the same match, and it may be the same exact match for someone with sickle cell. Right. So that's why it's important um, to have more of a diverse group of ethnic um, donors, and um, African Americans is extremely low, I think something like 9% um, of the population um, actually has, uh, you know, are in the donor pool. So, uh, yeah. That's huge. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing to add, you know, with our sickle cell population here in our clinic, we have about 16 patients currently that are on what we call a chronic blood transfusion mm -hmm. protocol. Mm -hmm. What that means is every single month they come into clinic and they're getting a blood transfusion to help limit complications. Mm -hmm. The main reason why our patients get these blood transfusions on a monthly basis is to prevent them from having a stroke or to prevent them from having a recurrent stroke. Mm -hmm. So this is the primary reason why we do transfuse our sickle cell patients. So this is life-saving for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have some patients that are transfused because of other complications, but, but that's the main reason. So we have 16 patients right now, so over the course of a year, that's about 200 units of oh, blood yeah. or more mm -hmm. that need to be, you know, if they're a bigger kid, they get two units every transfusion. So it's a lot of blood. We also, in our hospital, when patients come into the hospital with complications, they, if they have, like Tiffany was talking about, pain crisis, or they have 
a complication that's a pulmonary complication called acute chest or they come in and they have severe anemia which means their hemoglobin is really low they may get blood in the hospital and when our patients are being prepared for surgery we also transfuse them we want to give them blood to have them have more oxygen carrying capacity to have them healthy and have them healthy through the surgery in the perioperative period mm -hmm. so we do utilize blood a lot with our sickle cell population and it's a huge huge benefit and mm -hmm. life-saving for our patients um, how can, so the big thing, you know, as folks are watching, you know, how can they help? How can people help? What can they do for our patient population? So, um, so the best thing to do is, of course, to, to donate. Um, I mean, that's, that's the basics of, basis of this interview is to definitely educate the population and as well as let people know about different blood, blood, uh, blood drives that are going on throughout the, uh, their area. Um, there's a blood drive that's coming up um, with um, Faith and Family Church on Saturday um, from 8 to 2. Uh, there's a blood drive in honor of uh, Deuce, which is Richard Duncan II. Yes, and it's also <laughs> my church as well. So this is the sixth annual blood drive that they're having, and um, the goal is to hit 75 units. Um, and of course, you know, we, we want everyone to come out and donate. Um, so, of course, you know, you never know, anyone may, may need blood, but the thing is, is that, like I say, I've given you the tools to prepare for the donation, why it's important to donate, and for the month of, of September, you know, we especially need more donations for, uh, for those living with sickle cell. So, um, so yes, you can go to, to the blood drive, it's the address is 7900 Wamson Boulevard, and uh, there'll be food and snacks and everything, and this is sponsored by the Red Cross. Absolutely. So the American Red Cross is the big organization in our community and across the nation, honestly, that um, does b um, blood donations. Mm -hmm. So if you're not local, you can still go on their website and find different um, blood drives in your area. Or if you so think that you could potentially team up with the American Red Cross, we would love mm -hmm. to have other families um, go to their communities, go to their churches, go to community centers, you know, your college, wherever, and think about hosting a, 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 a blood drive. It's super easy to do because they do all the work. You just have to bring the people there um, to donate. So we are, through our clinic, hoping to get more families and mobilize more families to do this life-saving work because it does make a difference to go to your community and do these things. Yes. And also, too, Dion and myself, we are the community-based organization here in Richmond. So, um, so we are the contact for those who, if you don't know how to get uh, do a blood drive mm -hmm. or you want to do a blood drive and you want to help sickle cell in some way, shape, form, or fashion, by all means, um, a social media is a Living with Sickle Cell, R E A. You can follow well, us. Inc. Living with, yeah, sickle living with Sickle Cell Inc. Inc. on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, we have another mom in Deer that manages those two pages, but we're all connected mm -hmm. and you can reach any one of us that way. You can also reach us through the Sickle Cell Association of Richmond, also known as Oscar. And that so, number, that number is 804-321-3311. Again, 804-321-3311. If you have any questions, even if you want uh, to do it, host any events, mm -hmm. but again, we can partner up with you guys to um, to host the blood drive at your church, your school, the community, um, wherever you want to, you know, however you want to help and get involved with it. So, all right, guys. So we're gonna ask a couple final questions of the dudes, Tiffany and Dion. Tell us a little bit about your personal journey and your, your how your family has been affected by sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I mentioned, I have two kids with sickle cell disease. Um, more recently, and like like um, like you said, uh, Jennifer, the sickle cell affects the body from head to toe. Mm -hmm. More recently, um, my oldest has suffered from retinopathy, and um, he has um, had a blood vet, well, the sickling in the back of the eye, so the retina. So it causes him to actually, it blocks his vision. So literally, it's blood blocking his vision. So um, that's our, my recent <laughs> experience with, with sickle cell. Of course, we've had to have blood transfusions. Both of the boys had blood transfusions when they were younger. Um, of course, the pain complications, but we don't limit them on um, in anything. 
that they would like to do. Mm-hmm. So, or in you know, just advocacy. Um, I guess similarly to Tiffany, mm-hmm. I also have two children that have sickle cell disease. Um, my son, my oldest son, Jaden, who is nine, and uh, my younger daughter, Jalen, who is six. Jaden was actually born prematurely due to a stroke that he had while I was pregnant with him. And while he was in the NICU, that's when we found out that he had sickle cell. And so while I knew it was something that ran in our family, it's something that we didn't talk about. So even though I knew I had the trait, I had no idea what having the trait meant at all. Um, Their dad didn't know that he had the trait until after our son was born. And I told him that he had sickle cell and he told his family and the family was like, well, everyone in the family has it, your auntie, your cousin, this and that. But it's like, well, why wasn't anyone talking about it on his side or on our side? Because, um, you know, knowledge is power. And while we knew a little bit or I knew a little bit, I knew not nearly enough. And so that's a big reason why I started the organization, formerly Living with Sickle Cell RBA, which is now Living with Sickle Cell Inc. Because that particular organization doesn't just work in Richmond, but we help people in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. different parts mm-hmm. of the United States. Um, and then Tiffany and I also do Sickle Cell Association of Richmond. And so that's a big part of our advocacy, spreading awareness, um, not just to people that don't know about sickle cell, but there are a lot of people that have sickle cell that don't know about sickle cell. Yes, so right. you can ask different patients, there are young adults, there are kids that don't know exactly what type they have. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to um, speak up for themselves in school, um, in the workplace, and different things like that. So Tiffany and I, Tiffany and, I and Indira also help um, to empower patients and empower families as well. And speaking of the blood piece, my children have also benefited from life-saving blood donations. Mm -hmm. I have literally seen my child go from, or children go from severe crisis and pain and not knowing whether they were gonna be Mm -hmm. here the next day to that transfusion being like out of the hospital in two days. So it literally is life-saving. So my plea to you all is to Please, um, please donate and tell please your friends donate. and families to donate too. And it doesn't matter, like I said, we of course we want what we need more African Americans to donate, but any donation, everyone believes red, and one donation can save up to three lives. Absolutely. So guys, we would love for you guys, just like we're saying, just team up with American Red Cross, ask us questions here at Chor, mm-hmm. reach out to Living with Sickle Cell Inc. Um, <laughs> just knowledge is power, and so the more you know, the more you can help make other folks aware in your community. So thanks for joining us today and send us any questions you may have. And don't forget to follow us.